Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks and this is a tutorial on how I made my lacy scarf. Um, now I recently made this scarf because I just came out of hospital and I knew I would have a scar on my neck and I wanted something um, lightish to wear in the summer on a coolish day but also that you could double it up and wear it during the winter and it keep you warm. So I came up with this design and a lot of people have said that they really like it and wanted me to do a tutorial. So that's what I'm doing today. Now this measures, um, I have measured it with my super duper little guy and it measures 140 centimeters. So it's not mega long, but you could obviously go longer if you wanted to. Now I just used one skein of this yarn and the yarn that I've used for it is from Hobbycraft. It's called Twist and Shout. Now, obviously, I used the greys on this particular scarf, but I'm going to use the pink one on this new one. Now, there is a real glitz going through this yarn, but it doesn't pick up quite as well on the camera here because um, I don't have any artificial light on, and so it's just coming in through the window, and it's not shining it as much as it normally would. But the length of this yarn is 280 metres. I think for my grey scarf, I didn't go right to the end of the skein. That one was a little bit shorter, but this one I'm going to use a whole skein. But obviously, if you wanted it longer, just get more yarn. But this is the pink grey, and in here there are some really lovely greys and whites as well, which, um, just like this one, it kind of variegates as we go down, but it's got this marble effect as well. So it's it's quite pretty. Um, it is extremely soft. It says it's 98% acrylic and too metallic, but I have felt premium acrylic that has not been as soft as this. This is just absolutely beautiful uh, yarn. Now you can use plain, you can use um, self striping, you can use anything you want. And this says fashion yarn, but I know it's a DK. Um, the strand is definitely a three weight. Um, it's not the thinnest, so I'm using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. You could use a four, um, or if it's thicker, use a five. So um, just um, do it accordingly. Now, you can make it wider, you can make it shorter, you can sew it together and make it an infinity scarf or a cowl. You can do anything you want, but basically I'm just going to make a nice scarf with the whole of this skin. <clears throat> so, um, I'm just gonna clear all this stuff away now and get ready to start. So if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be informed when there are new videos. So just bear with me a moment while I get this um, all clear and ready okay so i'm ready now but i wanted to show you one more thing i forgot to say um with this particular scarf i just finished it on that's the, that's the beginning i just finished it on a shell row because it gives it this kind of natural wavy scallop edge and i didn't edge it in any way along the sides um my first row i just did a solid row but I'm not going to do that for this one. If you wanted to, you could finish on this row, which is harder to see on that colour. So let's get it. That row you could finish on this particular row here and square it off and make a little border if you want. Or you could do some tassels. It's completely up to you. So um, I'm just going to start by making a slip knot. You do that any way that you one and we're going to make um 32 chain so chaining is yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook we don't want them tight if you have a tendency to chain tightly then use a little bit of a bigger hook to make your chain we don't want them tight these are hard to see once you work into them with this marble in and i do apologize for that but i wanted to get this scarf made in this yarn because it's lovely so we're yarning over pulling through yarning over pulling through so i want 32 of these so i'm going to pause it because there's nothing worse than when you're trying to count somebody else's counting so i'll catch up with you again once i have my 32. okay so i have 32 chain 
And now what we're going to do is going to work in the fifth chain from the hook. So we need to count back. One, two, three, four, five. It's hard to see, isn't it? One, two, three. <laughs> I'm going to do it with my hook. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to do a UK treble crochet or US double in this stitch. So it's yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. We're going to do one chain and go back into that same stitch and do another. So we've made a V stitch. Okay, so now we're going to skip two. Now this is the hardest row because of the fact that it's hard to see. So we're going to skip one, skip two. It wouldn't be hard if the yarn wasn't quite as marbled, but because the stitch is two-tone, it's hard, it's easy to get one too many or too few. So I was trying to put my hook in to each stitch. Now I'm going to make another V. So I've skipped two, and we're going to make another V by doing one with a chain and another one in the same stitch. Now I'm going to yarn over, skip another two, and do a single in there. So what we're doing is we're making, this is our single at the end, we're making a V, a post, a V, a post, and that is our repeat. So we're going to skip two, one, two, and in this one here, we're going to make another V. So it's one UK treble or US double, one chain, and another one in the same stitch. And we're going to skip two, one, two and go in the next one and make our post and we're going to do that all the way to the end so i'm going to pause it there and i will catch up with you when i get to my final stitch okay so here we are it looks a little bit <coughs> holy i guess you could say so now i've got my last two skips and my very final post so this will start with a post and end with a post because up this end we have um, four chains so that works out. Now we're going to chain, well I'm going to turn it first and then chain two and in this first V, there's our post, in this first V we're going to make five UK treble crochets or US doubles. So if you want to stop this from spinning round like that just pop a finger on it and then we just in that one V make five stitches, five UK trebles or US double crochets in the same space. So that is my fifth one and that is a shell. That's what they call a shell. So when my mum first taught me this stitch many, many years ago, it was making V's and shells, V's and shells, all the way along. But I've changed it by putting a post in because I like the way this row looks with the V's and the post. So now we're going to do a post in our previous row's post. So it's a single one in that stitch there. Hang on, just need to pull out some yarn. Okay, so we're not chaining in between or anything like that. Now we've got quite a wide shell and that's going to fill up the space. So in this next V, you can see, the first row is always the hardest to see what you're doing. We're going to do our five. So that is now our repeat, a shell and a post, a shell and a post. And we're making five in our shell. We don't want it to become too much of a fanned out shell but we want a center stitch so we've got two each side and a center one and now we're going to do another post into the previous rows post so how you can see it's working out where you've got a v you've got a shell and we've got a post you've got a post so this one is a v we're going to carry on with our five 
Now I'm not going to pause it this time because it, there's not that many. So it's not going to be a long way to get to the end of the row. And I'm aware of the fact that I am crocheting fairly fast if you're a beginner. So I'm trying not to go too fast. So if I go ahead of you, then by all means, please just pause it. So I've just done my post onto my next shell. It's a very simple, but really effective pattern, this. Quite old fashioned, but I've modernized it a little bit by putting in that post. So if you ever get stuck, just count them. That's five. Post. Now our last shell for this row. And now we're going to make our last post in the stitch next to our treble crochet. So there, go in. And that will be our edge. So we've got a nice one, two, three, four, five shells. So I'm going to turn our work. We're going to crochet two chain. And we're going to go in for the center stitch which is always ever so easy to see, but you can count them if you want. And we're going to make a V in that center, that center of those five in the shell. So we've made our V, and then we're just in a post there, we're going to make a post. Again, count them if you want to, but it's quite obvious, it stands out nicely, which is the center of our five and this is a absolutely brilliant pattern I need to pull some yarn out but with me for sitting watching tv crocheting along and um it's nice and easy to just um get on with something else you don't have to pay it absolute attention I mean, obviously you need to pay a bit of attention you don't want to be going in the wrong places but it's it's a good one for um you know so doing something where you don't have to count so much, where you don't have to be, it's very, very simple, which is good. And it looks pretty. So we're just carrying on, making our V in the center of our shell and our post in our post all the way to the end. And here we are, our last shell for the row. Make our last V. And again, you can see here where you've got to go in. Just the one past our shell. And that's now starting to take shape. So this is where you decide which, which is the way you like it to look the best. Now, V's on the right side or shells on the right side. Now, I like shells on the right side. It looks better for me that way. But either way, it still looks quite nice. So that basically is our pattern. Nice and simple and easy. So we're going to do our two chain, which is our end post, and five UK trebles or US doubles in this one V to make our shell. And we just keep repeating this as far as you want. So five, and now we come to a post. So we're going to make our post. And now we make our shell. It's very simple. So anyone, any beginner could easily make this. Now, as I say, if you wanted to, you could just leave the ends. If you lose count, just count them. That's five. Now we're doing a post. Another five. But you can equally make a nice border all the way around it. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera. Try to stop doing that. It's annoying. Yeah, that's four, five. And our post. Okay. 
Another one, nearly at the end. Of course, as well, if you wanted to, you should, you could crochet the length of your scarf and do this. But they would be very, very long rows. Last shell. Almost there. Too close again. Okay, and there we go. The top of our two chain. Our last stitch. So, pull that out a little bit. And there we go. It's very simple, um, but very effective. I like it. So um, I'll bring in the finished one again. As I said, I didn't start with um, a solid row, which I did on the first one I made, so that I could keep our options open regarding what you want to do at the bottom. So this looks almost identical either side, and I decided to just leave it at that. But if you have a little look at the finished one this is how the pattern looks it's harder to see on that pink but you can see where this is uh variegating from the gray to the white it's kind of a gray white isn't it? it's lovely i like this color and um, i've got a feeling it's going to be just as pretty in that one so if you wanted to when you get to the end if you finish on the same row you've got the option of making tassels or just doing a nice little border or you can finish on this edge and have that little scallop and you can come back and do exactly the same this side and do a row of shells but obviously make sure it's the right way so i'm going to pause this video now because that is the pattern a row of v's with a post a row of shells with a post so where you have a v you're doing your shell where you have a shell you're doing your v where you have a post you're doing your post so it's nice and simple. Um, I'm gonna, as I say, pause this and come back to you once I've almost finished. Right, well, as you can see, this is a um, very much the same as the other yarn where it does variegate into the gray um, and then two-tone with pink and gray. And then we get the white, which is absolutely gorgeous. So if they made one that was predominantly white, I'd be definitely going to be buying that one. And then we go back to those colours again and we finish off with the colours we started with. So it's absolutely perfect um, the way it worked out. So I haven't got a great deal of yarn left. Um, probably enough for two more rows. So let's get them done. and uh, Or you could finish now. It's just your personal preference. So I'm just going to... Uh, finish on a V row anyway um, on this one and show you what I mean about the edging should you wish to do it. If I've got enough yarn that is. This one is slightly longer than the first one I made, only slightly. Like I said, I didn't finish the whole... Um, Ball on the other one um, I figured it was long enough I just judged it and I know I was I know I want what I was after the effect that I was after so I just stopped when I wanted but this is using the whole skein there we are that one was a little harder to see the middle so just counted almost there now I'm not gonna make a boulder on mine but I'm going to show you what I mean because it's very easy to square up should you want to I'm just hoping I've got enough yarn to show you I think I do so here we are um, so you can do this whichever stitch you want if you wanted to do a couple of rows of UK doubles which are single crochets in the US I prefer uh, chain one, cinch it down a little bit and in um, each space I'm going to make it actually in the space I'm going to do a half treble or a half double. Now I'm going to do one there and inside my V 
I'm going to do two. And then I'm going to do another one here. I'm just going to judge it however many I need to do. One each side of my post and then two inside my V. If it looks like it's pulling, which it doesn't, I will do more. So this one looks like I need another stitch there. So I'm going to go into the post itself. I'm just going to judge it so that it doesn't gape or pull. I don't worry whether my stitch counts are absolutely the right amount as long as it is looking good, not pulling. I need two there, I think, and one on that side. And then maybe two in there. It's all really just aesthetics. It's easy for me to say, or it's not easy for me to say. I'm going to go one in the post that time. Okay, so that is what it would look like with just a solid. You can do a few rows if you want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to finish the same as before on that edge because I like the way it looked with the little shell end. Um, I made that very small did cinch it down so that's it properly so I'm just going to do one shell end and then if you want to you can do the same at the other end and then you'll get that fluted um, effect both ends which might be pretty I'm really not sure if I have enough yarn I do have more so I could just use the start of another ball just to finish that which i probably will but i'm not going to edge along the side um as i said to you at the beginning of this video if you wanted to make it even shorter and then kind of crochet or stitch it together you could and make an infinity scarf or a cowl it's quite a versatile thing you can do anything with this Okay, so nearly there. If you wanted to, you could do more in your shells, but it would fan out the end of your scarf a little bit. It does, in any case, fan out the end because you've not got more rows pulling it. The centre rows, obviously, like they, where they're, the heaviness of the scarf, it gets pulled, whereas the ends obviously don't get pulled. So they do have a tendency to fan, but that happens with every scarf because all of them um, have that sort of effect. Last one. Nearly there. And I just realised I don't have any scissors, which is... I'm so out of practice with the... Okay, so that's what it would look like having that at this end. How much yarn do I have left? <laughs> Not really very much. So I don't think I've got enough with this ball um, to really show you. I'm just going to pause it a second. I need to get some sit. Okay, so I'll leave a little tail. A bit blunt, those scissors. And just end off with a chain, cinch it down and pull it through. Then you can sew that in. So if I go to the other end of my scarf and drop my yarn, I can attach it, slightly different pink this end, but I can attach it at the corner and show you. I possibly will not keep it because it's a different colour, but I just wanted to show you. I'm going to do my chain. I'll do the first one with both ends and then the second one on its own. Now I'm going to just go straight in to this V and do five. And it would have the same effect. I don't think I'll have enough of this yarn in any case. I'm working over that tail, which I won't carry on doing, just for this one here. I really don't have much, do I? I want it to tangle. 
Okay, so there's our post. Hard to see, going the wrong way. And then go into the V with my five. I'm going over that end row as well, the chain. Just to show you what it would look like if you did do this. And then we go in our post. Mm, the yarn is actually working. Actually, yeah, that's not right, is it? You have to really keep your wits about you. There's, it was the post, that was. And there's the feet. Looks different upside down. You might not want to do this. It doesn't look absolutely identical, obviously, but it just gives you a way of edging and keeping this kind of fluted edge. But you could straighten it off, do the straight edge or not. I, I preferred just leaving it as it was. I kind of liked that tatty lace look for this. It's just something else that you can try if you want to. So here's a post. I bet I run out of yarn just before the end. <laughs> It'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? Oh, here it is. Here's the end. So I am going to run out just short. Wow. Four. Five. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. I think I'm just going to do it. Huh? How incredible is that? So I would just end it off by cinching down and pulling through. And then that's what it would look like. It does obviously make this a little holier, but at least you finish and start with uh, one of these kind of fluted um, shells. That's what I was trying to think of. But that's if you wanted to make both ends the same. Obviously you don't have to, you can just it will obviously look better if this was the same colour. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. And that's my first tutorial done uh, since I came out of hospital. So um, <laughs> I'm glad I've got one done and uh, managed to get through it. So thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. and Give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye bye for now.